I was born on a cattle ranch in New Mexico, and in my late teens, I moved to California. And I have a son and a daughter and two granddaughters that live in Southern California. Um, I also, well, I've written three books. The first two were self-help books. I have a degree in counseling. And the most recent um, book, the third one that we're gonna talk about today is The American Southwest, Pride, Prejudice, and Perseverance. Well, fiction is a good way to write a book, and um, I just decided to do nonfiction because I wanted to use facts and figures to support the premise of my book. And I did months and months of research before I even began writing. And the book was published in 2011, but in 2012, I did a revision and I included new information. I've always been an avid reader, and um, my writing evolved from there. In fact, in the late 20s, my late 20s, I toyed with the idea of writing a book, but it wasn't until I became a contributing writer for the Inland Empire Hispanic News that I did a three-part series on the contributions of Latinos to the American Southwest that I became excited about the topic. And from there, um, uh, it evolved into a book. Well, I start out with a brief summary of the ancient Native Americans that populate the area that's known today as the Four Corners. And then I moved into the Spanish period, the Mexican period, and also the Mexican-American War and the signing of the Treaty of Hidalgo. And uh, I did this to set the, the foundation for what was to come in the book. And then I talk about migration or immigration from Mexico to the U.S and World War I. During that time, there was a, a shortage of laborers in the United States, and officials from this country, from the U.S., went to Mexico and recruited workers to come work in the United States to fill vacancies. And uh, from there, I moved to the anti-immigrant sentiments in the 1960s and the Chicano movement. And I wind up with uh, a section on Latinos in education. And these, these last uh, sections, really, I cover them more or less in the order that they occurred. Well, I do think bilingual education is important, and it should be offered throughout the United States, especially in states that need it the most, with the most uh, Latino population. And um, bilingual education helps the students to transition from speaking, say, Spanish or some other language to learning English and becoming proficient. And bilingual education in California has swung from one end to the other. In the late 1960s, when it was being implemented, it was uh, very popular and people were very enthusiastic about it. And then in the late 1990s, with the passage of Prop 227, it was all but banned. But more recently, in the last maybe 10 years, uh, something new has come, and it's called dual language immersion. And this is being used in more or less 100 school districts in California. And Glendale is one of the school districts that was one of the forerunners. And what dual language immersion is, is it allows students, not only Spanish speaking, but also English speaking students, to be in the classroom. And uh, they're taught in both English and a foreign language. And the language is not necessarily Spanish only. It can be Korean, Japanese, German, Italian. It's just whatever the class is. is presenting. And this is being supported by uh, middle class, affluent, English-speaking families. They see this as a way of um, exposing their kids to a foreign language. And maybe this is the way to go. Well, unfortunately, the United States um, 
has a tendency to be biased in some of their reporting of, of history, especially if it's uh, incidents or events that reflect negatively on the nation. They either gloss it over, they underreport, or they skew it in some way as to make it seem less offensive. And um, this works to our disadvantage because it doesn't get, you know, written as it happened. And this kind of inaccuracy was what propelled me to want to write my book. What happened in, in Tucson, Arizona, or Tucson, with the um, eliminating of these courses that you're talking about, the Mexican-American studies, uh, that was probably something that was in the making for a long time. I'm sure it wasn't something that happened suddenly, and uh, it's something that needs to be addressed, and it's something that, you know, cannot let, allow to be passed up. And I just hope that the complaint that Malta filed in 2012 with the Department of Education has the um, effect of bringing back those courses and, and reinstating the books. Well, whether people are willing to admit it or not, immigrants is what made America great. Uh, immigrants from many nations contributed in many ways. But if we look at just the Latinos, uh, the Latino population, uh, I think people would be surprised. Latinos start up businesses at three times the national rate. Actually, there is good news. Uh, in 2012, uh, the Pew Hispanic Research Center reported that in the year 2011, uh, the college enrollment for Latinos had reached 2 million, and that translates to 16.5% of total enrollment. And what's even more exciting is that Latinos are enrolling in STEM programs, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, at a greater rate than ever. And my encouragement to them is, yes, go for it, but make sure that you stick with it, that you're able to graduate and get jobs in that field or the field of your choice. And a deterrent to Latinos enrolling in college has been affordability and it has been family responsibilities and also poor English speaking skills. As we all know, education begins at home and parents have a big responsibility to become involved in the, the children's education and also to uh, provide a home environment that actually promotes learning. And uh, of course, the schools bear a big responsibility. They need to supply qualified educators, and they need to have programs that engage and encourage students to excel. Well, I hope that the reader takes away a, a balanced perspective of immigration, because so much of what you hear in the news is negative toward immigrants. And I hope my book will also provide appreciation for the contributions that Latinos have made, not only to the Southwest, but to the nation as a whole, and continue making. And I also hope that it stimulates the reader to research and look for more information on this topic. As I mentioned earlier, I grew up on a cattle ranch in New Mexico, and I've recently begun putting together stories about my experience growing up in a rural community without the amenities that we take for granted today. And I do speaking engagements on immigration and education, and I've spoken at some colleges and universities and other venues. I'm also uh, pursuing licensure in, as a clinical counselor. I'm hoping to start my internship soon.